I'd just like to share one of the first questions that I always get uh, when we're speaking in any forum is um, how do you find balance? How do you be a parent? How do you uh, be a volunteer? How do you be a um, leader of a women's group and um, into business and all these things? And what I'd like to share with you ladies is that if you stop looking at it as a timeline, but look at this as a season in your life of where you're needed the most, um, I find that it's much easier. Finding balance is, is not what you should be asking yourself. Not how do I find balance or find time for everyone. What you should be asking yourself is what needs my attention at the moment. And um, if, I, if I pay attention to this today, where can I accommodate the rest of Unfortunately, it's a harsh reality that we have to face as business women. We want to have it all, and a lot of times people are dependent on us to, to do it all. And the way we can embrace that is, is by understanding your importance and not getting frustrated. You start your business, you start supporting, doing whatever it is, and you stop writing stuff. So what I do know is that you can't experience I learned that your receipt book, your book, your log book, everything is important. When you start to make those notes and you start to write those receipts so your clients know, first of all, your work is authentic. What I also do even before I make my first sales is that I buy uh, revenue stamps. No. I don't need to make a first sale as yet, but I know I'll make a sale. I have my revenue stamps there, so even if I show the, the bank, they know, yes, she's still putting her money back in the economy, she's, per she's buying her stamps. So I started that this year actually as my attempt to improve even my standing in the business so that when I go for a loan, I can show them, okay, this is my track record. See how much money I made for so many months? through just these sales, and that's just a first step. And then you can even use the approaches that other persons who've been in business for a long time use, and they add value to those things. But I'm a younger, small business, so I'm sure there are many other persons in here who have approved methods, but start small, even in your approaches to see how you can bring your business up to a standard where even the little that you have, you can use to earn. So that would be one of, one of my advice. In terms of our question, it might seem, oh, I've tried it on, so I've tried iPad. <laughs> no one here from iPad. And they seem to be giving me a hard time. But it's a lot of work because if you have, if you're thinking about having a small business or you have a small business, you need to have your business overview, as you would have said, a little touch of it. Have your objective, keep, documents, keep records. If you're going to invest in your business, of course you'll use your personal savings. And you can use your personal savings and say, listen, I have invested $50,000 in my business. This is what you will show the bank or iPad or whichever entity you go to. I invested $50,000 and this is my turnover. And you will do your own financial analysis and your reports and they, I am telling you, right away, because they are the banker and I see that what you do with your personal, your personal savings, you get the loan. But I had a standard in doing stuff only because the public sector. My service says I will, I will provide this service and that's what I'm going to do because you're paying me to do it. And it wasn't all about the money, but it was the passion to give the people the service that they requested, that you decide. Right? Uh, I live by a quote, destiny is not a matter of chance, but it's a matter of choice. Because we could, we could say this is a chance to look like this, but at the end of the day, it's a choice that made you stay. Like Evie, you know? Uh, so, moving on to that is, because I had an expectation of how things ought to be, I might function one, two, three, four, and I expect my business partner to function one, two, three, four, when she knows it, four, three, two, one. And what happened was, I would get upset instead of allowing her to give or bring to the table her share, I would take it from her. So if she's, if I'm doing one, two, three, and she started four, three, two, I'll be like, oh, then I'll do it. And I'll go one, two, three, four. And, and my assistant said this to me. She said, instead of complaining, you're doing all the work. Why not allow her to help you to do it? And I sit there and think for a while. I was trying to justify it. Like, oh, no, she just don't like to do it. 
but it was true, it was allowing the other person, for people who have business partners, uh, it's like a marriage, if you're married. You need to listen to the other person. You cannot move on if you don't, you know, I would go home and I would brainstorm stuff, that's my strong point. And Talisha is more of customer service and listening to people, and you know, I would show up and make a decision instead of talking to her about it, and then she's like, you didn't talk to me, but I was like, oh, I thought I did. Right, so you, you always have to, when you have a, it's great to have business partners, but you gotta make sure you're on the same page. And the reason, or I am all what I am because of my team, it wasn't me. Right, it was because of my assistant, because of my business partner, they were able to speak into my life. You know, and um, I learned it the hard way, I was miserable for months. I, I regret quitting my job, uh, I even talk about <laughs> leaving my business partner and just open another office so I won't be close to her. The horrible part of it, but still, she's still with me. And why is because I was able to learn from those failures. You know, so I would say to people that once you start going in a cruise control, make sure people are around you to snap you up because you're in trouble, right? So don't ever think you got it. You need people to be at the top, right? I've heard so many stories, but Great women, and I love it. I love, you guys speak of everything that I had to talk about. But the one thing is that you prioritize your life. If you don't do that, then you're in trouble as well. If you're a wife, business partner, whatever. Like, I'm a Christian. I am not halfway Christian, all the way. Right, so it's God, then my wife, being a wife, and then a business partner. And I prioritize it, like Evie could step back because of her husband. We're not here to target men, but the men are our leaders as a wife, right? It's, you know, it comes with the friend that's marriage topic, but it comes with, he still needs to know what I'm about to do. And in dating, he know what I want to do. I don't tell you, he's very supportive. And he said, he called me a workaholic one time, and I was offended. But he sees that he's desiring a business now. You know what he said to me? Business is hard. It, it demands your attention. Right? But you have to prioritize your life. Like Evie said, where am I needed right now? So that's all I want to say is that I learned from those hardships and I took it and I prioritized my life and it was, I didn't see it as a chance, but I choose to do it this way. Thank you. Tell me, tell me your business. This is the hard part. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my business, uh, typically we create, design, develop, and implement software solution for our small businesses. That took you less than 15 seconds, and that's what it writes You're done. That's your pitch. I know I always feel this thing is so hard. No, because what, what happens is that we Again, it was said earlier today, we have this preset knowledge, or not knowledge, this preset thought that what we have in our mind, or that, that, that idea, that conversation, that, that concept, is, is not good enough. And it's okay to feel as though we need to push ourselves, but at the same time, we need to be happy and excited that we have these ideas and we are flooded and we are hungry. And that's what I hear from you. I hear that hunger. And for, just for literally, you took about 11 seconds to tell me what you do. Right there. Don't allow the doubt from others to cloud the blessing that you have right now. Don't do it. This question was how do, you ma how do you deal with the advances of men? when you want to be taken seriously? Well, I was 17 years old and I had my first sexual harassment experience. Um, I guess you can't tell now, but it was a very good looking teenager. We can see it. Yeah, and I have all this uh, big busts running in my family. So I was often um, at the end of jokes, or you know, I, I was a swimmer in high school also, so there were lots of jokes going around about I can float in water, and, and so at that point in my life, it's like, oh, I used to laugh it off. 
But then when I got into the work world, and like I said, my first incident was when I was 17, and uh, at like a, a top level director of the board of where I was working, um, literally pinned me to a wall for like for like 10 seconds. And when I complained because he was a director, um, a woman told me this. She's like, you know what, you you can make a scene, or you just forget about the film. That that was the advice I got, and I stopped being friendly. And even, you know, some people tell me that I look unapproachable. And it's because I start to cultivate what men like to call the bitch face. And I'm sorry, but it, it wasn't a bitch face. It was a, I'm not letting you into my space face. And, um, and unfortunately, it, 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 tra it translates into different things to different people. But I've said this to so many women. You, you guard your heart and you guard your body. And the way you do that is from the onset, if you have to use that straight face, then you use that straight face. You, you're there to do work and, you're, and if somebody disrespects you, you let them know that you don't appreciate it and, you're in, and you cannot continue to work or to do it. No amount, no paycheck or no amount of uh, flattery or no amount of compensation can, can repair the damage that sexual harassment does. You know, I would, you know, sometimes you go to some of those big events where men are powerful and, you know, they would make some kind of a, a, a remark at you. And, you know, what, the way that I dealt with it was that either I, I spoke to them like it was, I did not hear it, that, you know, they would say something like, what are you doing tonight? I say, I'm on the phone all night with my husband. Yes. <laughs> or I'm going wherever with my boyfriend. Things like that, you know, where, where I'm not hearing you, and then still, you know, it, it, it throws you off a little bit. But what you do is stick to the issue. Right. And as we were saying, I would like to engage your company in XYZ. Are you available or are you not? So straight away, they, you, you literally see them sort of cowering a little bit, two steps back. And when they two step back, you hit them again on the focus. And the issue is, if if he is being clouded by that vision, you don't need his business. Mm -hmm. Flat off. Yeah. So that is where that's what I do with it. Uh, question number two, and question number two was about making a simple yet powerful pitch. You want to, if you're going to grow your business and you have a staff, you want to make sure you write up maybe that job description or make some kind of uh, policy or strategy of what you, you're looking for from that individual. It's always lost at some point in time and you don't want that to happen. Um, what really stood out for me in Michelle's presentation, ladies, is her introduction. When she introduced herself, and her organization it is something that I find a lot of a lot of us don't do in business, which is the number of years that the business is existing, the budget that she is managing, and what she needs to be acquiring and um, achieving in one year. That is excellent, an excellent um, introduction of business, and something that I will definitely learn from. Two things I learned. Um, one time I worked on YY, and that was failure. When I was applying to YLI, I think I wrote that one of the best things I've done in my life is fail. I have failed and I have failed well. <laughs> <laughs> I went to UG uh, the first time, I failed. As a matter of fact, at Christmas I was telling uh, people that was the first time I got an F minus. I don't know if anybody's ever got an F minus, but I have. So if you can top that, then you are a better failure than me. Um, not only I failed with relationships, I accept, being accepted into YLI proved to me that I wasn't a failure. It also proved to me that I was, uh, what's the word? I didn't understand what failure was, and I didn't understand how to deal with failure. He said, if everybody dealt with failure the way scientists dealt with failure, this world would be an amazing world. A scientist has an experiment. If I put this plant into water or acid, what happens to it? If something good happens to it, why did that happen? If something bad happens to it, why did that happen? And, uh, Failure is judged not over a 15 year period. It is judged at a moment in time. It is one incident, incident. it is one period, it is one thing, one activity, one day, one moment. And you carry that moment with you, like me, like I did, for 15 years. 
you go through depression, you think you're bursting on the face of this earth, you think you're fit crap, you can't own a business, you're not fit to be a model. You know, it's, it's, it's failure can just drag you down. And my aunt said, you know, you shouldn't let the fear, uh, of, you shouldn't let failure prevent you from doing anything in life. You shouldn't let failure cripple you. So while I, if while I didn't do anything for me, while I taught me that I'm not a failure, yes, I did a stupid thing at one point in time. Because of that, I was able to come back and I was able to, business grew threefold when I came back from my life. Because of that, there are days when somebody said you feel like crap and you feel down. There are days when I make mistakes, but now I realize that I have tools that can help me to battle failure. That I have tools that help me understand how to deal with those emotional days. I was um, a national coach for a while and they were telling me, you need to arm yourself for the days when you're on the ground dragging and you don't know how to get up. You need to, when you're up, you need to learn how do I get myself back up. The other day we had to do a video for a while, like I was a mess, the print screen not working, I got biscuits to deliver, the man can't get me my labels, supermarkets are like, are you coming with your order? I'm like, no, you never disappoint a customer, but that day was an awful day. Fielder says, you know, we can knock your heart today, but while I think I had to turn out to your support system, you know, Abigail is like, Abigail, I messed up today. You can call Abigail. That is one way of dealing with the failure. You know, you can read books, you can watch a motivational video, sometimes that just takes you even further into a video, okay, like I'm in bed on this sheet watching the video. Go outside and play with the sun, play yeah. ball for a day, and that helps you deal with fear. So that's some of the things that I learned since coming back from my life. Another thing I learned is I'm actually not an entrepreneur, I'm still a boy. I learned that the other day. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell do you mean? I'm an entrepreneur, how dare you? It's like, no, I'm actually self-employed. I work for myself, I bake for myself, I do merchandising, delivery, packaging, communication, marketing, I do everything. That's what I do for myself. An entrepreneur is Richard Branson, he does day. He's sitting down watching all the little agencies work for yeah. him. You know, he's making change and he's making a difference in the world because he's now reached a point where he's an entrepreneur. You know, where all of his hard self-employment days of work, you know, have paid off and now he's doing what an entrepreneur is. So for me, um, as a self-employed <laughs> wildlife person, I do aspire to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so overcoming failure, um, getting your support group, um, <laughs> these are all things that I have employed uh, in order to you know, make myself a mom and an entrepreneur. The other day, because of being a part of wildlife, um, we are, have access to lots of opportunities uh, to help make myself better. If I look back at my life 15 years ago, there was absolutely no way that I could have said today I would have been a model, for one, and two, that I would have owned my own business. I remember once I looked at a, a speech by Steve Jobs and he said his life made sense when he looked at it backwards. So for me, that's where I am. I know when I listen to your life, I can see the sense of it forward and backwards. I can see the reach that your life has had. And I would like to think that now that I've started, now that President Obama, while I know that small business bureau, that Diana, that THAG, all these local organizations have come together to help all of these women, that our lives will also be sent backward and we will be able to extend our reach. Everyone might have a very a different skill. You put those skills together and you can accomplish so much. Do not be afraid of competition collaborate, reach out, work together, and amazing things will happen. Thank you. Ms. Thompson said to me, and I think that as a young woman in coming up, that never give up. Exper ex experimentation, failure makes you that individual. Never look down on yourself. You need to take that step forward and do what you're meant to do. A lot of people might say that, oh, you can't do this, but you need to put that aside. Never let your job or anything stop you from doing what you need to do. And I will say I am a product of that. I was a member of the Gap Police Force and I have a degree in communication, my first degree. And when I was going on today, my second degree, they said to me, if you're going to do that, you'll need to leave this job. We can't facilitate that. And I said, you're not going to stop me because I know who I am. I've had all the experimentation. I have the experience. And based on all the experience, I've learned that no one can stop you. Only you can stop you by profession which I gave up so that I can open my own business to create uh, to make soaps and body butters and shampoos and conditioners and you name it. 
um, experimentation. One way, uh, one example of that is before I started making shampoo, a sister from my fellowship said, um, you know, with all these good things you make, maybe you should try shampoo. And the first thought in my head was, I've never even thought about that, but I didn't say it out loud. And I said, okay, great, I'll try. And I went home and I experimented. Of course, for the first two weeks I got it wrong. Uh, it was getting hard, it wasn't still liquid. But then eventually it got there. I experimented and it got there. So um, the experience, you have to be able to focus and to put a positive outlook on life. I could have thrown away my life because I was thrown out of my home and basically disowned by my family because I was pregnant at 17, but I used every ne negative thing that every person would have told me about my life then, and I pushed forward. I pushed forward to that. So, uh, as leaders, we have to be able to stay focused. Uh, one of the things I wanted to, uh, two of the things I actually wanted to leave with you is, as a leader, you have to let your words align always with your actions. Yes. It must always align themselves. The other thing is, as a leader, Always listen to hear and not to respond. I have coined a leadership that was a statement for myself, but that was actually a requirement for the program. And my leadership declaration statement reads, I am committed to being a consultative, transformational leader who takes courage to face opposition and lose myself to the service of others by discovering myself deeply, finding a personal mentor and coach, and then working with other leaders across the region to support and leverage opportunities. I continue to motivate myself. I read a lot of motivational speeches, I listen to a lot of motivational speakers, and I try to keep myself active in the area of volunteerism. So I motivated myself along the way. Those are the areas of which I was able to overcome my challenges. You believe it and you will see it. Commit to the results you're looking for. Find ways around obstacles. Have high expectations. You also recognize abundance. Acknowledge all that you have to work with. Broaden your definition of winning and look for ways to work to work cooperatively with others. You also look for possibilities, focus on opportunities rather than scarcity. Find what's working, what's working for you. Keep looking for the next possible answer. Next, unleash your energy to fix what's wrong. Connect with a positive vision. Believe that solution exists. Focus on what is right with the situation. Then you'll write the changes. Realize that change is possibility. So persons will like change. Learn to live with uncertainty, yet act with confidence. And challenge the order in your life. Then you take yourself to the edge. Trust yourself and create your own future. Follow your edge wherever it goes. Move beyond your best. Be your best for the world. Act with service and grace. And you make a contribution through your action. Talk about your successes to discover your dreams. And those are the recommendations I want to leave with you. And As a leader, we have to build ourselves up. Because if we are empty vessels, eventually we'll burn ourselves out. So one, um, you must ensure that you be priority. You fill yourself up with good stuff so that you can spread it to others. Because eventually you will burn out and you will probably let out some frustration on somebody. So ensure that as a leader, that you fill yourself up in good ways so you can fill yourself up is by reading books, connect with your spirituality, because I'm a respecter of every religion. Uh, connect with your spirituality, read books, network with strong women. I tell you, since I'm here in a few hours, I've made a lot of friends, <sighs> made a lot of promises. <laughs> And you know, it's so great. I must commend the entire uh, 
the entire team, Abigail and team, for this awesome job. And as well, I want to close. If any woman sitting here and thinking about doing something this good, I say go for it. I will personally come on board and support you.